Hello, my name is Amanda. Welcome to Birch and Lily, where I talk about all sorts of crafty, wonderful, fun things. Today is January, what is it, 31st? Yeah, tomorrow is February. <laughs> Today is January 31st. It's episode 100, which is insane. I have a giveaway because it's episode 100. Um, I think I'll jump into that a little bit later in the episode, so definitely make sure you don't miss that. Um, and I'll make sure all the information on how to enter is down below in the description as well. On the topic of the description, you'll also find all of the places that you can find me on the internet, Instagram, my website, all those fun things will be down in the description. Um, but so I don't ramble on too much about all of that stuff, uh, let's just let's just jump on in. Um, I have a finished object. I think last episode I had talked about what was going on with this piece. This is the Spring Squirrel by Blue Flower. Um, I can't remember where this bag is from, but anyways. I last episode had basically all of this finished, except for I was waiting for one color to come in the mail uh, because it had been out of stock forever. And so that color did arrive. I have not ironed this, I apologize. <laughs> But it's done now. Um, I was missing Adobe from the Gentle Art. I did use all of the call for colors for this piece and I'm so excited it's done. I have a frame already for it. Right now it has actually the Halloween squirrel cross stitch in it from the blue flower so I'm just going to switch it out. It's been Halloween for like a year and a half in our house because I haven't had anything else framed from the squirrel collection. So spring, well, Spring will be here eventually. We're supposed to get, I think, like 8 to 12 inches of snow on Wednesday. So it might be a while till spring is here. But I'm going to pretend it's spring and put this up and maybe that will help the snow melt. <laughs> um, I did use all the call for colors for this. Um, they're all gentle arts and classic color works. So over dyed threads. And then this fabric here that it's on is 40 count mallow which is one of my favorites. It's a reasonably priced fabric if you're starting out with linen um, because it's partially cotton. So the price of it is really, really good. The color is beautiful. I find the weave of it's great. I stitched this one thread over two linen threads um, on the 40 count and yeah, I'm very happy with it. I guess here's one more peek. It's just, it's so cute. So yeah, I should leave that out actually. We'll put it on the back table so that I hopefully remember to frame it soon. While I'm moving around, I am hoping, I can't decide. <laughs> so I have a closet over in this direction of me. And right now I just have a whole bunch of those like plastic rolly cart things in there, but I kind of want to get another Calyx. So that shelf that has yarn in there. Um, that I'm pointing at and put it in my closet and I can't decide if I want to keep the two plastic rolly carts and just get like a one row one like that or get one that's two rows and get rid of one of the rolly carts and I could put it down in my dye studio. Not that you can see any of it and yeah but my husband has to come in here and help me do some measuring and kind of figure that out and I think I'm leaning towards the two rows because I have baskets in a weird spot that then could be on the shelf. I don't know. I just have lots of stuff everywhere that I feel like would be better suited for some more cubes. So now that I'm talking about it, I think I'm going to do that. Yeah. And then I can move that really cart and put all of my dye in it. This is sounding like a better and better idea the more I talk it out. What is it with, like... I don't know, you think something in your head, but the moment you speak it out in words, at least for me, suddenly it's like, yeah, why Why was I contemplating this or thinking about it? It's the right choice. I'm gonna do that. Cool. Maybe I'll go to Ikea before the snowstorm, and that can be one of my snowstorm activities, is building a shelf. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, thanks for your help. <laughs> Okay, so you know what? After my finished object, let's do the giveaway now. Episode 100 is pretty fun, if I do say so myself. 
Um, so I thought it was a worthy time for a giveaway. I can't believe, well, there's more than 100 videos up because there's definitely some stuff that isn't counted as like a podcast episode. That's pretty crazy. I think I've been doing this now since November 2018. Wow. That's a long time. Thank you if you've been around that long or if you're new here even. I appreciate you checking me out so much. It's it's so cool to kind of have created this little tiny community around the crafts that I do. I don't know. It's fun. It's really fun and I appreciate it a lot. And that is why I'm going to do a giveaway. Um, so how is this going to work? Open to US and Canada only, please, just because shipping is a disaster. <laughs> um, and you have to be subscribed, like this video, and leave a comment down below. Maybe telling me about your favorite thing uh, that I do in my episodes, or your favorite portion of my episodes, favorite episode you've had, something like that. I don't know. Let's go down memory lane. That sounds fun to me. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'll run through those again after I show everything really quick and I'll make sure I have the instructions down in the description as well. Um, but two different things. I'm going to have a cross stitch giveaway and a knitting giveaway. And maybe let's do, um, also in your comment, like I said, th this is why I'm going to write it down below because I'm kind of deciding this off the cuff. Also in your comment, along with your subscription, liking, leaving the comment about what you like about my videos, favorite part, favorite video. Either put one for entering knitting or the number two for entering cross stitch. Make sure there's a space or a comma between them so they don't get mixed up um, so that I can search them. Um, you can enter both. You can put a one with a space and then a two as well if you want, totally. Um, but yeah, we'll do that. So one will be knitting, two will be cross stitch. I'll put this all in the description <laughs> in a much more concise, less rambly way. Ah, okay. Giveaway number one. I have this little clumpage of yarn. Clumpage? Oh my word. Um, so these are all singles bases. This here is Hedgehog Fibers Skinny Singles in the color Spell. This is Less Traveled Yarn in Sweet Tart and Less Traveled Yarn in Claudette. So a singles base basically means it's a one ply yarn. Um, it's 100% superwash merino, but it's only plied one time. I don't know if I'll be able to show that on camera. I don't know if you can tell that it's only plied once. Where? Let me find a two ply. So this yarn here, I don't know if you can see the difference. How it had? It looks like it's twisted. Not this one. This one. <laughs> it looks like it's twisted where this one is just like one single strand. So that is what a single ply is. All of these are single plies. So they would be great for a shawl, a sweater, something like that. Socks, they would not hold up terribly well. Um, but any other sort of garment would be really cute, a hat. Um, so this will be number one. And number two, I found all these in my stash and I know myself and I'm not going to stitch them. Uh, but they are very cute and they would be wonderful for someone starting out with cross stitch. Um, some of them do have the threads in them, some of them do not. Um, none of them come with fabric, but it does give you a recommended fabric on the back of all of these. So I have a huge stack of Little Hugs Needleworks little cross stitch pieces. They kind of all go together. Oops. And like I said, some of them have thread in them. I think some of them might even have silks in them. I'm not 100% sure. I got these, I think, on like a D stash when I was first starting to cross stitch. But I just, I have so many other things that I'm working on. And I feel like someone else would love these a lot more than me. So this is going to be the second giveaway. The number two, the cross stitch portion. Can't show the back. Uh, I was going to show you because some of them do come with floss some of them do not um but yeah I thought that would be a cool prize for my cross stitch lovers so like I said check the description for the exact list of what you need to do to enter because I never tend to write that down in my notes and then I can't remember so it'll all be in the description for you down below this video um and if you want to enter both you can if you don't want to enter both you're more than welcome not to as well. Okay, so here's the thing. There's a lot of sketchy things going around these days with giveaways where fake accounts contact you asking for bank information, for all sorts of personal information. 
I will only be asking you to contact me through my email. You will be notified in next uh, episode. It will be across the screen. I will announce it. You will contact me by my to my email, um, which will be down in the description. Send me an email saying you're one of the winners, and I will ask you for your information then. If someone contacts you, do not give them your information, please. I really don't want this to turn into some sort of scammy situation. I'd be so sad if someone had personal information stolen from them through this. I don't want that to happen. So yeah, the winners will be announced next episode across the screen. I will say the words, whoever is the winner then can contact me by email. If you get contacted by someone, it is a scam. Please don't give your information away. I'm gonna have a fun time editing all of that because I just tried to re-say that about four or five times, um, which you won't see. But yeah, everything, like I said, a thousand times will be down in the description on how to enter, how to contact, blah, 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 to hopefully make this all concise and easy. So yeah, if you are interested in that yarn, if you're interested in those cross stitch patterns, definitely make sure you enter on the comment section of this video. So let's jump in to works in progress. I have been happily working away on my pink fizz like crazy. I do not know where this bag is from still. It was a gift and the gifter doesn't remember either. So is what it is. Uh, this is my pink fizz. It's a pattern by Andrea Mowry. It is a sweater and it's absolutely gorgeous. This is the yarn I'm using. These are both from Mulberry Fiber Co. This is their Berry Surrey base and this is their Berry Sock base. Both of these are in the colorway Whisper, which is, I think, a club colorway or like a collective colorway. So I don't think it's available anymore, unfortunately, but it's pretty. So this is where I am. I have the whole front part of the body done, which is crazy. Uh, <laughs> so now these, the two, because this will like sit here on me. So those are both on hold, and now I'm working on the back portion of the body and doing basically the exact same thing as the front. So I won't show that too much. Um, but yeah, so it's gonna sit something, something like that. It has dropped shoulders, so the shoulder of the sweater won't start until quite a bit further down, which I love the fit of sweaters like that. So that is what is going on with my hair. <laughs> Goodness out of the way. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited about that fit. It seems like obviously a little big right now, but definitely I think once the front and the back um, are joined at the top here at the shoulder, the fit is going to be perfect. So yeah, I, I love these. So, or this, this is one thing so much. It's so soft. Um, I just, yeah, very happy. I am knitting the size medium, size two size two. I keep saying medium, but it's called size two in the pattern. That is what I'm knitting. Um, I used the call for ribbing needle on this, but not the call for body needle. I think I dropped some. Uh, 3.5 millimeter US 4 for the ribbing and a 3.75 millimeter US 5 for the body. Um, now keep in mind, everyone's gauge is different. I've considered not saying needle sizes anymore, because everyone's gauge is different and I would hate for someone to say, hey, Amanda knit this with these needles, so I'm gonna knit this with those needles. And then they do it and it's all off and it doesn't fit because <laughs> that would make me really sad. Um, just because everyone's knitting is so different and heck, I've noticed my gauge has changed even just in the past couple years. Like the gauge I had a year ago is so different than the gauge I have now. The gauge I had a couple months ago has actually surprisingly changed a lot since the gauge I have now. Um, but it's so cute. I can see the little split hem down there. I love that detail. I have decently wide hips, so a split hem I find is really flattering on my body shape. Um, but it's definitely going to be a positive ease type sweater, a really, really loose, cozy fit. And yeah, I'm looking forward to working on it in the snowstorm. I feel like it will be a wonderful, cozy snowstorm project. So loving this still. I think this is basically what I've worked on mostly in the past bit. 
um, past two weeks, I guess, since I recorded last. It's been my main focus. And for now, I think that's what's going to continue to be my main focus. It's what I feel like working on the most. So, yeah. Pink fizz. Love it. I'm trying to decide now. <laughs> I've hit the point with this sweater where I'm getting close enough to the end of it that I'm like, what do, what do I want in it next? I don't know. I haven't decided. But it's, it's in the back of my mind. I've been watching our own Knits and Pearls tons and every single sweater she knits I want to knit so that doesn't really help the situation much but I'll figure something out. One other cross stitch project I've been working on uh this bag formerly known as the sag and stitch I don't know what they're called now I feel terrible I'll I'll if if you want to know I'll link it down below it's it's like any other I don't want to show oh I can't show it it's like any other project bag I have with a clear front um but I am working on, I've started a new project. Uh, this is called Suzy Suzy Sampler Maker. I'll put a better picture up. But it's a pattern by Lindy Stitches. And it actually matches, you can't see it. But I have up on the wall up there, right there, Mary Mary Needleworker, which is also from Lindy Stitches. And so this is basically a sister pattern to it um, called Suzy Suzy Sampler Maker. So what am I doing? I'm using called for threads. These are all called for. There's a lot of DMC, which I appreciate. There's also some over dyed threads as well, though, too. Lots of fun stuff. Um, and then the fabric. Uh, Mary Mary Needleworker is n not knit. <laughs> Stitched on bramble, which is like a cream colored linen with like sp not speckles, but like swirls of this green throughout. So I had this piece of fabric, um, it's from Color and Cotton, They're one of their club colorways, June 2020, from their neutral, but it has like a bluish purple tint to it, and when I got it in the mail from this club, I was like, this is not neutral, what the heck, but it's actually working perfect for this piece, I think it's really cute. And I think it will make it match quite well with Mary Mary Needleworker. I don't know, something about it. I just think the two of them will fit quite nicely together. So I haven't done tons. I just, I really needed a new start of something um, this past weekend. And this is what I pulled. And I've been liking it a lot. So yeah, this, like I said, is a 40 count club color from Color and Cotton. I'm stitching this one over two, so one thread over two linen threads as well. And I don't know, it, there's, there's something different <laughs> about stitching a Lindy Stitches piece compared to all the sampler pieces I have going on right now. And so I think it's kind of refreshing in a way. Um, and on that note, I don't have a skein of DMC white in here, but I need it. So I'm going to grab that too before I forget. Or not. I thought I had one kicking around in a drawer, but I don't. So I'll have to find that somewhere. There's probably some in my basket of shame that needs to be put away. It's all of the uh, embroidery floss that I've used for projects and just haven't like re-put back on their rings and it just sits in a basket until I get in the mood to put it on the rings. And I haven't done that in a while. But there's probably some in there. Anyways, uh, easy peasy socks. I also have been working on these a lot. This bag is from Juby Rousseau's. This is one of my, and I'm gonna grab a sock blocker too. This is one of my projects for the Great Woolberry Christmas Socks Make Along. As always, I'll put it across the screen because I can't remember. Uh, but I have one sock done. And I have some reporting to do on this pattern. Um, it may say easy peasy. I, I don't know if it's me not paying attention lately and not being able to read things or that the pattern isn't written as easily as I thought, uh, but I had a hard time with these after I got past the leg. Um, now don't get me wrong, these are so pretty, they're gorgeous, but I don't, I don't know. Something about... Like, I, I turned the heel and suddenly nothing made sense in the pattern. I feel like something is missing from it. So, I take away what I said last episode about be this being a great, like, color work beginner pattern. Because I was so lost. I had to make up my own toe for this. The toe made absolutely no sense. 
Um, and I don't know if it's just, like I said, because I'm having a hard time focusing right lately and I couldn't figure it out, but so the toe is my own doing. I just wong that. Um, but it's pretty. Like, I, I don't disagree that it isn't pretty. It's gorgeous. But I just had a really hard time following the pattern. Like, there's a chart in there that the pattern doesn't even call for you to use, which I thought was the toe. But then when I was reading the written instructions, the chart didn't match the written instructions for the toe. Plus... The way they told me to decrease the foot, the stripes on the bottom didn't match up with the way the t toe said the stripes should be on the bottom. That, yeah. Um, so I'm still going to knit the second sock. I do have it cast on. Um, and I'm just, I took really good notes of what I ended up doing so that the second sock, I'll just follow what I made up. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I don't know if I recommend this as much as I did last time or last episode for a beginner color work sock knitter. I don't think it's as easy as I thought. Um, but like I said, I did cast on the second one, just a tiny little bit going on here. Um, but I will finish it and I should finish it quickly. So my notes still make sense when I get to that portion of the sock. Um, I'm knitting these on 2.25 millimeter needles. It's a US one cast on 60 stitches, which is the small size in the pattern. This is a yarn I'm using. This is Volenvine Yarns in the color Deck the Halls. It's on an 80-20 base. This here is Woolberry Fiber Co. on their 100% Superwash Merino base in the color Flannel Pajamas. I definitely think I will have enough left from both of these skeins to make more socks, which is exciting. I would really like to make something with... Um, the deck the halls from Bull and Vine just like on its own not color work so that the color can really shine through because that is one thing you can kind of see it in spots on the sock it's that creamier color but it just doesn't show as much as I think it would if it was knit on its own um but yeah easy peasy socks it's patterned by Caroline Adamsick now I do believe it was translated into English, and maybe that's part of the problem. Don't quote me on that, though, because I don't fully remember if it was translated into English. I may just be rambling things that I don't fully know. But anyways, it's very pretty. I just got very confused. So <laughs> that's where we are with these. And the second one is cast on. Now, one other thing I did work on a little bit is my northeasterly blanket. You'll see I've moved it into a basket. It used to be in a bag. I'm finding the basket is easier. Um, the yarn doesn't get so tangly. I'm trying to should I put this. Like I can just kind of leave it all in here like this. So that's what I've been doing for my northeasterly. Now as for, I don't remember how many rows I've added since last time. Maybe I'll just like hold it up and run it across the screen again really quick. Um, I kind of lost my mojo on it again, which I figured would happen because I was working on it so much over the past little while that it just, eventually I knew I was going to hit a point where I needed a break. Um, I've still kept it out and available to grab though, because I find if I need something really easy to work on, this is really, really simple. Um, so I, I do still love it. I just think I need a little tiny bit of a break on it and that's fine because um, I know I will go back to it eventually. It's not like I hate it now or something. <laughs> Sorry, I have, goodness, yarn tangled all around my foot on the floor from that. Um, but yeah, that's my Northeasterly. I cast that on with a 2.75 millimeter needle. I think that's a US 2. Um, and I followed the pattern for casting on all that fun stuff. And then as for the size of the sections, I think they are 26 rows. Now, if you're casting on the 26 does not, or does include the four or five, four rows in the cast on. Does that make sense? So the, the cast on to start a chevron row has four rows. And then I did 22 more after that. 
and then every included row added on was 26. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> um, but that's what I've been doing. And yeah, that, that is all I've been working on. Um, I feel like I've been relatively monogamous lately and I'm fine with that. Um, I feel like as long as I'm having fun, right? Um, I'm glad I was able to get the spring squirrel done. That was definitely a goal of mine, I guess. And I, I did that. So that's good. Um, and I have also totally different tangent, but I've been dyeing yarn in my basement again. So I should hopefully have some yarn soon up or some new yarn up in the shop. There is some yarn in the shop still, if you haven't checked it out. Um, a decent amount of tonals and a couple other fun colorways as well are in the shop still. Um, but yeah, that, that's what I've been doing. Definitely be sure to check the description for the easy to understand rules on how to enter the giveaway. Um, and I will announce the winner for that on the next episode. If you did like what you saw today, please, please, please hit the thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed. Um, because that helps me out a lot. The YouTube algorithm is a mess and it doesn't always give people's videos out to the people who are subscribed. So if you like the video or even hit the notification bell, though I've heard that isn't terribly reliable either, the more you do, the more likely you will see my new videos. Um, but if you don't see one on a Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern time, either I have made a um, announcement on Instagram saying I am late or YouTube ain't showing you my videos. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I I will stop my rambling. Um, I hope if you have been getting snow, you're safe. If you're about to get snow, you stay warm. Um, and I will see you all again in the next one. Bye! <music>